Welcome. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to actually do a giveaway today, which I've never done before. I have it set up on this little random um, clicker thing that will pick a name at the end of the uh, Facebook Live broadcast. And then I have so a couple things to send to some winners. And so that's really exciting. I hope you're as excited as I am. And I really, really hope it turns out. So we have one watcher so far. Yay! Thank you for joining me. Okay, so here I am. Two watchers. Yay! Two prizes. Maybe you guys will be the only ones on and you'll both win. So what are we going to talk about today? We are going to talk about the huge color revamp that Stampin' Up! is doing. This is a very exciting thing. Stampin' Up! will either do a color refresh or a color revamp, and they don't do them all the time. The color refresh is, you know, just to kind of keep things on trend, and it's a very small little refresh, maybe moving a couple of colors around, maybe reintroducing, you know, an in color from the past. It's usually, it's usually not too big of a deal, but a revamp, which is what we're doing this time, is a really big deal. And it's not only moving colors, we're actually gonna change the ink pad from Stampin' Up! And so don't, don't panic too much. There's no reason to replace all your ink pads because the old ink pad is gonna work just fine. Um, and, and a lot of colors aren't changing. We're actually only losing 13. So it's not like you have to go out and, especially if you're a demonstrator, you know, you don't have to go out and just buy all new stuff. And especially not for customers, oh my goodness. You know, what you wanna do is just get things slowly, gradually, build up your collection, and then you'll have all the new stuff in good time, just like it always is. Whenever we get a catalog, my wish list is like a mile long. And you'll see that when I do a little um, photo of my catalog today because, oh my gosh, I have so many sticky notes in it. It's almost hard to turn the pages because the sticky notes are always getting in my way. So let's go ahead and flip this camera down and we'll start talking about colors. And then the other thing we're gonna do today is we're going to do a Stamparatus demonstration. I made a really cute card that uses the fabulous Flamingo set and it looks like this. And you get to use all four sides of your Stamparatus. I'm gonna show you how to make the card and then I'll go back and I'll rip all that um, photopolymer off those plates and show you exactly how easy it is to line it up if you were to start from scratch. So let's go ahead and get going. So hi everybody, thank you for joining me. But this is the onstage bag that we got last weekend and I went to the Milwaukee location and I absolutely love it. It's beautiful. It uses some flowers that are in the 30th anniversary logo from Stampin' Up! And it is really fun. There's a pocket on the front and on the inside, there's another great big pocket and there's plenty of room. And it's, you know, it's almost perfectly sized for those paper pumpkins that we have or for bringing any kit with you. Because I don't know about you, but as a true stamper, I really can't go anywhere without my stamps and inks. I always have to have something with me. And so this will be a great bag for taking to the camper or up to the cabin with a few supplies. So I always have some stamping with me. I don't always have time to work on it when I'm on the run, but I just like to have it with me. It's just one of those things. So I'm going to set the bag aside. And then you're going to see the awesome catalog from Stampin' Up! Now, too bad you're not a demonstrator, because if you were, you'd be able to flip through this and see everything. Um, if you are a demonstrator, I know your, your catalog or your wish list next to your computer is probably looking like this. These are all little post-it notes that I have on my catalog for things that I have to get. I mean, there's, it's just a lot of things that I have to get, so just an awesome awesome catalog and now we're going to talk a little bit about those colors that i promised you so here we go these are the new in colors from stampin up i'm going to try and get them all into the photo here so they look like a lot of primary colors but they're actually i think even more gorgeous than primary colors and not totally totally primary colors um, because we've got a grapefruit grove in here, but I'll just go over them really quickly. And they're not like a, like this isn't a true red, it's more of a red pink, and it's called Lovely Lipstick. And then we have something called Grapefruit Grove, and then a real bright yellow called Pineapple Punch, 
a really pretty green called Call Me Clover, and then something called Blueberry Bushel. I love this color. It sort of reminds me of the old Brilliant Blue from the past. Now, I'm not really sure how close that is to Brilliant Blue because I don't have any of that paper left anymore, but I like it because I always liked Brilliant Blue way back when. And now let me show you how these stamp pads work. So we're just going to take one here. We'll, we'll take this middle one. And on the back, you'll see that we have the stickers, just like we had in those stamp pads um, from days gone by. And this is a little more intuitive for you to work. In fact, let me pull out one of the old ones. So this is our old stamp pad. And if you remember, well, actually, it's still current, but you have to push on it. And then you flip it over and then you push it in. And how many times did we goof up in a class or stamping on our own where this lid kind of was a little loosey-goosey and it would flip off and then everybody would get full of ink trying to get the lid back on. And so the new stamp pads are not going to be quite as complicated. So let me show you. So we are just going to open this up and it's very intuitive. You just push up. I mean, there's no sliding it like a drawer. You just pull up. I mean, that's what we want to do when we open up something, right? Just, just pull it up. And then you do slide it into place so that you can stamp with it. And then on the back, let me grab a paper piercing tool here. And then, of course, to push it back together, to put it back together, you do have to pull on it a little bit like a drawer, just like we did with our old pads. But then you just shut it. No kind of second secondary slide that you have to do. So let me go ahead and we're going to grab something that's really cool that I think is going to help you from uh, making mistakes while you're stamping. Because you know how if you have several ink pads open on the table, one of the troubles is that, you know, you're in a stamping frenzy and you take your stamp and you you're inking, you're inking, and then you ink, and then you go, oops, oh my gosh, I just inked in the wrong color. Well, this is so cool. Stampin' Up! just thinks of everything. So you're going to open up your pad. You're going to take one of these strips, and it doesn't even have the name. It just has the color. And you're going to lay it in here. And now you know that you are stamping with a yellow stamp pad. So you won't get this mixed up with, say, an orange stamp pad because it's going to be very obvious that this is yellow. So I love that. I absolutely love that about Stampin' Up! So it's really, really cool. And then, of course, we can label our new ink pads, which is very similar to what we've done in the past. I always use a paper piercing tool, grab up these labels, and then on the front, which you can still store these in your Stampin' Up! color carousel. That is going to be discontinued, but it will work. It's just that the only little problem is that it's a little bit loose. So if you're into spinning your carousels around and around, it could fall out. Um, so just a little note about that. And let's see, then I like to take another one, and I'm just going to grab any of these here because sometimes I put things in backwards. Sometimes I have it so that the back is showing. So then I just want to have the color here. So I'm just going to grab one and put it on the back so that I have my color here. There we go. So there it is. And then the last thing you want to do is you actually want to pull off this entire bit. And the reason for that is, is because you need, you don't want that extra layer there because look at this, these stamp pads stack. So if you take that label off, it gives you just a little bit more of a room for your little footsies on the bottom of these ink pads to find the indented footy on the top of the next pad. And that makes it so they're, they're very stackable, just like you see here. So I love that all new fun things. So these are the in colors. So now let's talk about something else for a minute. Let's talk about some of the colors that are changing. So these will not be available for purchase unless you're a demonstrator until June 1st. But let's talk about some other things that are changing. We have kind of a, it's not really a new color family, but they pulled out three colors from the color families and they're putting them in their own kind of little corridor and that's our basics collection. 
So the basics collection is your Whisper White, your Very Vanilla, and your Basic Black. Now I want to mention something about these. The thing I want to mention is that Stampin' Up! is taking away the Basic Gray and the Basic Black archival inks. This was quite a shock to a lot of us, but I have to say I'm pretty excited about it. And the reason is, is because I could never get my archival Basic Black to dry very quickly. And when you're stamping in a big group, which, which we often do around here, um, it just takes too long to everyone have to use the heat gun. So I was really, really missing my stays on black. So guess what? Stampin' Up! brought it back. Our stays on black pad is back and I'm so excited. This means we, can, we have something for stamping on acetate or AKA window sheets from Stampin' Up! It also means it'll work on glossy paper. Um, and any kind of a foil, it's perfect for that. So this really is the answer to a lot of our stamping up questions. And so this, in my opinion, can go bye-bye. I'm very happy to see it gone. Very happy to see Stays on Black back. And then of course, we are also keeping our Tuxedo Black Memento ink. This is just a tad lighter than that deep, dark black that you get with Stays on but it is the best black to use if you're using photopolymer stamps. The reason is, is it doesn't stain as deeply and as densely and as intensely as like a permanent ink would. So the, the Tuxedo Black I find works great for water coloring using with blender pens. I've had no problems with it um, and I do reserve it especially for my photopolymer stamps. And then finally, you might be wondering about the basic gray. How could we possibly get rid of basic gray? Because that's like a that's like a real true basic color that we don't want to lose. So we're not. We're not actually losing it. Stampin' Up! is turning it into a classic color. So it'll be a uh, water-based dye ink, just like all the rest of them. It will not be archival, but it will go into our neutral family as a basic gray. Now one thing all of you need to know is that your archival ink refills, your basic gray archival ink refill should not be used on the classic basic gray ink pad. So you will want to separate that out. So if you choose to keep your, your uh, archival pads, which is great, I plan to keep them, take them up to the cabin, that's where all my retired things go that I wanna keep. I will take the reinkers with me and maybe even throw a note on here to use only archival reinker. Because if you put archival reinker into a dye based ink, you're going to have trouble. You'll ruin your ink pad, and that will be a very sad day. All right. Um, and we are going to also continue with our craft white stamp pad. So this is the pigment ink that we use and um, it comes uninked. It has its own little reinker that you ink it up with. And so we'll keep that, but of course it'll go into the new redesigned ink pad. So again, if you have this, there's no reason to replace it. So I can't stress that enough. This is not that big of a deal as far as you know, money out the door. You don't have to worry about that. Just just keep what you have that's going to be current and then add your colors slowly as you wish. So the first color family I want to talk about is our neutrals colors family. Since we were kind of talking about it already, there's two colors that we are adding to this neutrals color pack that are just new and gorgeous. We have the Mary Malo. Oh, can you imagine how good that's going to look with that stamp set called Half Full, which, by the way, is carrying over into the new catalog. So excited about that. That is the most gorgeous wine color like ever. And then we have a new gray, and this gray granite is so awesome, and I'm going to show you why. The other gray that we have, which is staying with Stampin' Up!, is called Smoky Slate. I have loved using this gray. I use it all the time. It's absolutely wonderful. However, it's really a cool gray. So as you notice, it looks great with Whisper White. But when I was stamping with vanilla, or if I wanted to add some vanilla embellishments or use vanilla paper, look what happens. The going gray just looks sad. It just doesn't look very happy when paired with very vanilla. 
And so now we have a new gray. It's called gray granite. And look what happens when you put it with very vanilla. Now, I know because you're watching it on the internet, this might not be as exciting as it is in real life, but it is absolutely stunningly beautiful together. The gray granite just has just this touch of a yellow undertone and it just pairs up extremely well with the very vanilla. So I'm super, super excited about that. Um, let me see. Oh, you know what? I didn't, oh, I did. I do wanna mention what is being discontinued in this neutrals pack. We are saying goodbye to chocolate chip. A little sad about that, but you know what? I'm just gonna stock up and take that up to the cabin. And if I really, really need to use it, I will definitely um, use it because I do love that color. And I even hate to say it, but look how good it looks with the Merry Merlot. Oh, but you know what? It's okay. I'll get over it. Okay, so I'm going to set those aside. So let's do talk about this neutrals pack. We have the Merry Merlot, which is, which is one of our new colors. We're going to be keeping Early Espresso. We're going to keep Soft Suede. We're going to keep Crumb Cake. Keep Sahara Sand. Add the gray granite, which I showed you how excited I am about that. And then we have our smoky slate. You can even see the difference. Notice how much yellower the gray granite is. So awesome. Okay, so here's the smoky slate. Then we have our basic gray, which, which is in the, the neutrals. And what we'll be doing is switching out the pad to a classic pad. And then we're bringing back, we're adding some color to the neutrals, as you probably noticed, with the Mary Merlot and Mossy Meadow, which is a returning in color. Fabulous, absolutely fabulous, so excited about that. And the Knight of Navy. So these are the three big new ones that are being added to the neutrals pack. So much fun. All right, so now I'll put all the neutrals aside. And then let's look at, let's see, there, let's go ahead and look at this Regals pack because boy, oh boy, there are a lot of changes in the Regals pack. First of all, we're losing a whole bunch, okay? We are going to be losing Perfect Plum. Oh my gosh, I cannot even recall the last time I used Perfect Plum. It's just not a go-to color for me. Then we have Island Indigo which I thought I used a little bit more, but then when I was looking through some of my Island Indigo paper that I have on hand, I actually haven't been. I still got some of the old packaging for that, so I was a little shocked. I guess what I've been using a lot more is Bermuda Bay. So I've gravitated more towards Bermuda Bay instead of Island Indigo. But I've always liked this color, but I can't say I'm gonna miss it terribly. And then we have Elegant Eggplant, which is also leaving. I'm not sure when Stampin' Up! brought it in, but I feel like it's been in our line for a long time. Of course, I'll miss that a little bit. But again, I wasn't using it. I, again, it's not one of those that I was pulling out very often. Always Artichoke. Oh, I will miss this. I will really miss this. I've already ordered four, four or five packs to keep up at the cabin. And then also my daughter is using this color in her wedding invitations, so you know we love this color around here. I think it's because it's just a great color for pine trees. And we have a cabin up north which has a lot of pine trees. I have pine trees right outside my back window here, so I think mossy metals still work for pine trees, but it's a little bit more yellow. I don't know, just not feeling super sure about losing Always Artichoke, but I know I'll get over it. Okay, then we have Rose Red. Again, cannot remember the last time I've even ever used this because we always have so many better colors. Now we're gonna add some new colors to this uh, Regals pack. So the first thing we did is we took Real Red out of our Brights pack and put it into Regals. And then we've got two new colors here. We've got a brand, brand new color called Shaded Spruce, which is gorgeous, I love it and it'll probably make me feel better about losing Always Artichoke. So that one goes here, and then we also got um, a returning in color called Blackberry Bliss. It was so funny, one of my downline members came to the meeting last night that we had at my house, and she was all dressed up in Blackberry Bliss, and she goes, I'm celebrating the return of Blackberry Bliss. She was so excited. So that is truly a good color. So let's move on. So that was, that's the neutrals. Now let's look at the brights. 
So there's a lot of changes in brights too. We're getting rid of Tangerine Tango. Again, not a color I gravitated to very often. A few times in the fall, you know, for Halloween cards and whatnot. And now we also um, have Tempting Turquoise that is being removed from the line. So I will miss that a little bit, but not as much as I think I will because, again, it's just a little dated. It just doesn't look, I don't know, as fresh as some of the other colors that are coming in. So what's coming in? Well, get ready for a lot of really bright bright. It's back to brights. So we are going to have Poppy Parade. This was an in color from a long time ago, and it's back. Gorgeous and back. Big and bright. Absolutely love it. Then we're getting a color called Gorgeous Grape. Again, look at that bright, bright color. So pretty. We are going to add Mango Melody. And seriously, I don't know, you probably won't be able to tell in the video, but it is absolutely the exact color of a mango. And I love mangoes. I eat mangoes all the time. So that's, that's, that's kind of a fun color to have in our line. Then Granny Apple Green. Wow, this is super. I, keep, I think I'll probably keep calling it Granny Smith Green. It really looks exactly like a Granny Smith Apple. So Granny Apple Green is coming into our Brights line. And then we have a couple of awesome returning favorites here. We've got Coastal Cabana, which, ooh, ah, that's one that we love. And then Flirty Flamingo, which is in our current in-color retiring line, which is the 2016-2018 colors, is actually not ever even going to be gone because we're going to take it out of our in-colors and put it into our Brights pack. But look how pretty Coastal Cabana and Flirty Flamingo look together. Does not that make you want to go to the Caribbean or something? I mean, how pretty. And of course, I would like to go to the Caribbean immediately. Thank you very much. We're due for about six inches of snow today, if you can believe it. Cannot even believe it. So as I mentioned, the in colors from this 2016-18 uh, palette are discontinuing, except for Flirty Flamingo back here. So be sure that if you do not have your re-inkers, because I know my customers do this, and I'm sure that some of you are guilty as well, you, you buy that, um, you buy all those stamp pads, and then you think, oh, I'll get the re-inkers later, and then somehow later never comes. Well, later is now. You really, really need to get them now because as soon as they are gone, they're gone. And if you try to find them later, like on a place that starts with E, it's going to be like four times the price of what you would pay for it if you just get it now. So say goodbye to Peekaboo Peach, Emerald Envy, Dapper Denim, and Sugar Plum. And so we will definitely miss those. But on with the new. So we had the new colors. I showed those to you. And then these are, these are the carrying over in colors, the 2017, 2019 in colors. And I really like these. So I'm glad to have these around to play with a little longer. So Powder Pink, Lemon Lime Twist, Tranquil Tide, Berry Burst, and Fresh Fig. And you know, now that I'm thinking... Did we talk about the, um, did we, I don't think we talked about the Subtles colors, did we? Does anyone know if I mentioned the Subtles colors, what's going away? I don't think so, because I didn't talk about how um, Marina Mist and Soft Sky had a baby, did I? Okay, we better talk about this. Hi everybody that's joined me. It's great to have you here. So we are going over the in colors and the old colors and the new colors and the, the soon to be retired colors. So I am just going to quickly go over the subtles here because that's the last one I have left. So let's talk about what's retiring. This is a big, big change. This, this color family is changing a lot. So we're going to say goodbye to Wild Wasabi and we're going to say goodbye to Perfect Plum. Does this look like Perfect Plum? That is not Perfect Plum. Do I have a Perfect Plum in here? I don't. This is, I don't have a Perfect Plum here. Okay, so I goof this up, but pretend this is Perfect Plum. It would be darker. Oh, I have a Perfect Plum and it's not supposed to be in here. Perfect Plum, I believe, was in the Regals pack. So ignore that. This is supposed to be Wisteria Wonder. So. I just have the wrong label on here. So we're getting rid of Wisteria Wonder. We're getting rid of Pink Pirouette. A little sad about that. That was a nice bright white pink. It looked really good for um, 
you know, those brighter cards that you wanted to make with a pink. And then we're losing two of my favorite, favorite blues, Marina Mist and Soft Sky. But I will tell you that if these two got married and had a baby, it would be the new blue coming in. Look at that. How awesome. So this is balmy blue. So that's the new blue coming in. So we're going to say goodbye to Marina Mist, say goodbye to Soft Sky, and then we have a whole bunch of new subtles that are joining the subtles family. So we've got balmy blue, which is going to be awesome for those baby cards. Awesome for those cards where you need a lot of sky in the background. It's just a perfect blue. And then we have petal pink. And that's a really pretty um, pink. A lot more subtle than kind of that more brighter, whiter pink pirouette. This will be a little more elegant. So I'm looking forward to working with that one. We have something called Seafoam Green. Oh, this is just to swoon for, just to die for. Absolutely gorgeous. Look how pretty it looks with mint, mint macaron. Mint macaron is coming back. It's joining our uh, Suttles color family as a returning in color. Love this one. And we have Highland Heather, a really pretty, um, a really pretty purple. It's going to go great with that gorgeous purple that we're getting. I think it's called Gorgeous Grape. So Highland Heather, Gorgeous Grape are going to look great together. And Highland Heather is a little brighter, uh, a little more of a happy color than our Wisteria Wonder was. So pretty excited about that. Oh, it's nice to see Tiffany on here. She says she's really happy to see Blackberry Bliss returning. Well, I think everybody is. We are all excited about that. Okay, guys, thanks again for joining me. We are going to now get into something that some of you have been waiting for. I have a Stamparatus tool here, and we are going to make a card that actually uses all four sides. So, um, let me move this here. And I think I gotta move this back just a hair because otherwise I'm my stamparatus is hitting my iPad. So I'm gonna move that back. Hopefully we have more room now. Let me show you the card we're making. This is a card that I made at a shoebox swap at on stage, and everybody just loved making it because we used the stamparatus, and people who had never even used the stamparatus before used it for the first time and couldn't believe how unbelievably awesome and easy it was to use. So I'm going to show you not only how to use it in a very effective way, and even as a demonstrator to remember, uh, or to even show you a couple of tips as a demonstrator how you can use it with your customers, and then also for those of you that are my customers, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you longing for this. So it's going to be one of the very first things that you'll want to order when, you, um, when, you, when it turns June 1st. So we're very excited to have this in our product line. So let me show you. So that was the card. And for those of you that are staying till the end of my video and I do a little drawing, let me show you what you're going to get. So two people are going to win the card I make today and the card that I made in advance. And I'm going to pair that up with some jewels. So you're going to get the Lemon Lime Twist and the Berry Burst Tutti Frutti Sequins. And you're also going to get a little package of the, these are really cute, um, oh what are they called? They're the Silver Metallic Enamel Shapes. Got it. So I think you're going to enjoy this, and, and it's going to be nice because I think I can just mail it, and it'll be really inexpensive postage, and you're going to get a great little cute gift in the mail. So let's go ahead and make this card. So I'm going to start by doing our stamping first because the assembly is actually pretty easy. So let me, I'm just going to grab my supplies because I've got those sitting on a different table. So it'll take me just a second here because there's a whole lot of supplies to make this card. Okay, just because you have a Stamparatus does not mean you don't need a lot of supplies. You still need lots of supplies. Okay, so let's get going. I'm rolling my sleeves up and we're ready to rock. So let's talk about the Stamparatus just a little bit here. The cool thing about the Stamparatus is that once you have it set up, you just get to stamp it over and over and over, like as in zero mistakes. So you might make a few mistakes setting it up, but once it's set up, zero mistakes. So much fun. I've heard um, a few people complain 
and I'm going to tell you that every tool is different. So it's gonna just be like a big shot. If it doesn't work quite right, you can add a few additional little things to make it work better. These things would be shims. And so when I first made this card, I found out that, it, that there were places that didn't stamp quite as clearly as I wanted them to stamp. Well, I didn't worry about it. What I did is, this works so brilliantly, I will show you what I did. I took my Stamparatus directions and put them on the very bottom. That adds like a shim for me so that it makes it just the teeniest bit higher. Then because I'm using photopolymer stamps, I want to um, add this, what you call it, it's like a foam mat that's made for photopolymers. And so I'm going to put this on the bottom. Thank you, Terry, for telling me that, that I don't have this very much in the picture. So you know what, I'm gonna turn it so that I have the Stamparatus more in the picture. So just to review, um, you want to add shims if you aren't getting the perfect image. So I just added my directions for the Stamparatus to the bottom, then I put my foam piece in because that's the next layer that I'm using and I want it a little bit of a foam piece because this is a photopolymer stamp so I need that extra lift. And also the foam has a little bit of a give so you get a better image with your photopolymers. Then I'm also taking a piece of thick, very vanilla cardstock and putting that over the top of my foam pad because I'm stamping off of my card piece a little bit. And because I'm stamping off of my card piece a little bit, I don't want the ink going onto my foam. So I needed an, and plus, I needed another shim because it, it just needed to be the teeniest little bit higher, okay? There's two magnets that come with your Stamparatus don't ever take them out at the same time. Just take out one, that's all you need. These are so strong magnets. So I think of this first magnet as the magnet that I use. The magnet that's underneath, that's my backup magnet. That doesn't go anywhere. That just stays right there because I really, really don't need it unless I lose my first magnet. And there's a spot here, right here for my first magnet. So it's a great little thing to have an extra. So there we go. So that's the thing about magnets, because if you get them close together, they're going to snap and break. All right, so now let's make this card. So much fun. So what do we need? We need a piece of Whisper White cardstock that's three and a half by four and three fourths. Okay, so we are going to take our magnet and we're going to put this right here, just like so. Perfect. Now we have our images and I will show you, after this card is made, I'll just show you, I'll rip all these images off and show you how I lined everything up. But for this, I have my, my uh, flamingo here, the one, one part of it. I have the legs over here and I'm going to do all of my, my stays on black, or not stays on, my tuxedo black memento inking first. And so, and then on this side, I have the body of the flamingo. This is the part that I ink in black, and this is the hard part that I ink in powder pink. So let me, let me get it so we have the tuxedo black. So now I really want to turn this. I know um, hopefully it will be okay. Hopefully everything will be in the picture here. All right. So we're ready to go. Let me show you what I did. I'm gonna move this down. So when you're stamping with a whole bunch of inks, like there's gonna be three different colors on these plates, how do you keep your customers from knowing which ink goes where? So what I did is I just took my label maker and I labeled tuxedo black. So that means on this plate, on, for this image, they would use tuxedo black. Did the same thing over here, just added a label that says tuxedo black so that everything over here is inked in tuxedo black, okay? Then when you do the other side, I'll show you that when we get there. For right now, we're just gonna work with the tuxedo black. So I've got my Memento tuxedo black, which is my preferred black for our um, photopolymers. So I'm going to ink up these legs and I'm just going to bring this plate down, give it a little press on the top, lift it up, and there we go. We've got our 
we've got our um, flamingo legs right here. Then we're going to ink up the line drawing of the flamingo again in tuxedo black. Going to bring it over. So now we're using the plate on the right side. Press it down. And we've got our beautifully inked bird. I could go ahead and just do multiples of those and get the exact same image on every single card. So now what we do is we just make sure this is still up here in the corner. Sometimes it moves a little bit when you um, take the plates on and off. And we're going to flip this plate. So I'm just going to lift it up, turn it around, and insert it back into these grooves. And when I open it up, I can see that over here I need to use powder pink. So that's the next ink color that I'm going to use. So let me grab my powder pink ink one of our continuing on in colors. So I'm just going to move this over here and I'm just going to ink up the body of my flamingo. It's kind of a shadow background and I'll bring it over here and we'll just bring it down, give it a nice little press, lift it up and we have him stamped in powder pink. Now I'm going to flip the top plate around that had the legs and we're going to, again, we're just going to go straight up, turn it around, insert it back in, put the hinges back in, and then we're going to ink this up, and I'll show you, in Blushing Bride. So I'm going to grab my Blushing Bride ink, and we're going to ink up the main part of this bird here, and then we're going to just set it right over the top, make sure everything is in place, set it right over the top, give it a press, and we have our perfectly stamped flamingo. Woohoo! So that one is ready to go. So now I can do the rest of the stamping to make this card. But before we do that, I'm going to grab some uh, wet wipes here. I'm going to take all of these off and show you how to line up, okay? Because I know you're very curious about this. So we're going to take off this big piece. We're going to take off the legs. And I've had a lot of customers say, well, how do you even get it lined up so it's perfect for you? So I'm going to show you. I'll just show you right now how we do that. Take off the body. All right. So then you want a piece of scrap paper down well. I'm just going to use this as my scrap paper because you need something to kind of double check to make sure you have things where you want it. And then this is kind of the secret to doing this. So whenever you have something that has a bunch of steps, you want to use your biggest image first. The one that you're going to be kind of designing everything around and putting all your other things onto. So this is the biggest image of the flamingo, and it's where we're going to overstamp the legs, overstamp the body two different times. So this is the piece that needs to go down first. So what you do, you know what I think I'll do is I'll just, I'll just add another piece of whisper white here. I feel so confident about this. So I'm just going to put this here. This is going to be my card front. And I want it a little bit off the page, so I'm just going to lay it down. And that looks good to me. I want it right there. So I'm going to just, I put it down on the paper. Now I just bring the plate down, press it down, bring it up. Okay? Now I'm going to ink that up because it's in Blushing Bride. Ink, ink, ink. And bring it down. All right, so that is what I'm working with. So now how do you do the next part? Well, we need to do those legs. So let me grab the legs, and I'm just going to set them over the top of my image so that they look like they're pretty well lined up with where I want them. I think, I think that looks pretty good. All right, so then I'm going to take this plate. I'm going to turn it around. And I'm going to bring it down, and now I'm going to ink that piece up in Memento Tuxedo Black. And again, if this because this is my practice one, if it isn't quite right, I can clean it up with a wash or with a wet wipe, 
and then retry it. So press that in, and ta-da, it worked perfect. I tell you, this is the easiest thing since sliced bread. I love it. All right, now we have another bird body that we have to do here. So let me go ahead and grab him. This is what we're going to do in powder pink. So I'm just going to, again, set this right over the top. And because it's photopolymer, I can see right through to where it needs to go. And this one is going to be inked up again in the powder pink. And I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to close it up. Then I'm going to ink it up in powder pink. And go down. Beautiful. Look at how gorgeous that is. Now we're going to take this plate off, turn it around, put the hinges right where it needs to go, and then we're going to add our final piece, which is this black piece here. Or it's, it's actually kind of like line images that go right over the top of everything we've stamped. So I line it up, and I've got the tuxedo black side. And now we're just going to ink that up with Memento ink. Close it up. Oh, did I have that up in the corner? I might not have. Whoops. See, this is why you want to do it on scrap. All right, so I did not have this quite up in the corner. That's another thing to remember to do. But because you can see it, I can move it around. Looks good. Oh, look at that, how perfect. Now I have some smudges here, but now I know I have everything pretty much lined up to go. So that's how you do it. It's awesome, it's easy, it's quick, and I love it, and I'm pretty sure you're gonna love it too. So let me take this out of the way, and we're going to finish up that card. So let me wipe my fingers so we can get any excess ink off, and I'll show you how to make the cards. So you're gonna have a piece of, what color is this? I think I think this is um, pink pirouette. Is this the right color? Yes, it is. So we are using a, a color that's going to soon be retired. Let me double check. It's so funny that I, I thought I was using Blushing Bride, but this sure looks like pink pirouette to me. So let me just double check. Nope, that's petal pink. I know I have a pink pirouette in this pile because I just showed it to you a little bit ago. Huh, I think it is Blushing Bride. Okay, so it's Blushing Bride. I think it's just that I have such white, white lights that it, everything looks lighter than it really is. So this is uh, Blushing Bride, eight and a half by 11, scored at four and a quarter. And then the next thing we're going to do is I stamped on some scrap Whisper White and it says tickled pink for you. And then I punched it out with a punch that's um, called the Pretty Label Punch. It looks like this. And that is carrying over into the new catalog, I am happy to report. So then you can just go ahead and add some snail. We're going to put this right here on the inside. So that's our inside sentiment. Let me grab a bone folder. I just love my bone folders. I hate it when my cards are flopping around. So. A bone folder makes them lie nice and flat. All right, then we have some Melon Mambo. This is three and three-fourths by five inches, and we're gonna be building our card on here. Then we're gonna take that cutely stamped, what did I do with it? Here it is. Here's our little pink flamingo guy. And I'm gonna use the back side of the Melon Mambo because nobody will see it, and that will be where I stamp off of because I don't wanna stamp right onto my table here. So I'm going to open up Pacific Point and put some water around this flamingo. So we'll ink this up and then we'll just stamp some water just like that. All you have to do. And that's all that we needed Pacific Point for. Then we're going to open up an old olive ink pad and we're going to take these little reeds that grow along the water and we're going to add them to our flamingo card and put one back here. Doesn't that look pretty? Oh my gosh, I just love this card. All right, so that was Old Olive. And now we can go ahead and we will take this piece of paper, which I, th I think I told you the measurements for it somewhere, I think at the very beginning of the video, and we're going to add this to the top. 
Very, very easy. Just set this right in. Perfect. And now I have a half inch by four inch piece of Blushing Bride. And I've already stamped congratulations in Melon Mambo. And what I'm gonna do now is add a little pennant end to this. And so I'm going to take my triple banner punch, but because it's just a half inch and it's kind of tricky to do it from the top, I'm actually going to flip this over and then I'm gonna put it in so that I can kind of see that where the C is. And I'm just gonna back that out a little bit so you can't see the C and then just give it a little punch when it looks like it's kind of right in the middle. And there you have a little banner punch, and it looks so cute. Then we can go ahead, add a little snail to the back. We'll set this up here. And I'm leaving a little room over here on the right side because I'm going to put a, um, what you call it, a perfect white accent up there. So I'm going to flip this over, trim this even with the edge, and then we're going to put this on our card. So we can just do this with snail. And we'll set this in like so. So pretty. Give that a good press. And now we need our little um, white accents. So I'm going to try to find one. Here's one. And I'm going to put that on with my paper piercer. This is the smallest size. I think they come in three sizes: small, medium, and large. I have the smallest size here. I'm just going to set this over here on the right side of the congratulations. And the card is done. Isn't it cute? So I know we have some people on here that patiently waited till the end of the video because I'm going to try doing a giveaway. So my giveaway is going to be, um, of course, the cards. So the card that I just made and the card that I had made before, and I'm gonna tuck in with the card some little embellishments. So you'll get some lemon lime and berry burst tutti frutti, and some silver enamel dots, or silver enamel shapes, okay? So I think you're gonna love it. And now what I have to do is um, do something I've never done before, which is do a prize drawing. So I'm gonna get my little iPad out, and I really, really hope this works. Okay, here it is. So what I'm going to do for the first time ever, I'm gonna do two little giveaways. So I'm going to do pick a winner. And so if you've commented, shared, um, guess what, you're, you're automatically in this drawing. So I am going to do two winners. And I'm gonna do pick a winner. And the first winner is Christine Chesney Shannon. So I'll be getting in touch with you so I can get, you know, message you so I can get your address so I can mail you one of these pretty cards. And now let's do a second winner. Um, so I think I have to go back. And we'll do another pick a winner. And our second winner is Elizabeth Leek Slonsick. So we have our two winners, and I will put these cards in the mail to you because right now it's not snowing, so I can still get out to the mailbox. <laughs> I want these to be in tomorrow's mail, so if I don't do this today, who knows? I might have to shovel my way to the mailbox tomorrow, so... Here we are. So again, thank you so much for joining me. I've loved um, having you here today, and I hope you found this to be kind of a valuable um, lesson in how to use the Stamparatus, as well as learning all about the color revamp from Stampin' Up. Have a great day. Bye-bye.